Now these are things that are really important. We get a Wahoo, crew member gaps the Wahoo on the side of the boat. He says, Wahoo coming over. That means everybody spread out. Take steps to your left and right and give the crew member plenty of room to bring the Wahoo over the rail in a gap. Another crew member is gonna show up with the bat and stun the Wahoo or subdue the Wahoo immediately. Crew members only to unhook the Wahoo. I don't want to see anybody reaching down with your pliers or your dikes to unhook your own Wahoo. Free spool your rod, step away from the Wahoo, let us take care of them. Okay, that's the total procedure. Don't get anywhere close to them. We will unhook them for you. We will take your tag from you and we will staple the Wahoo. I don't want to see anybody slapping a tag down on the Wahoo or anybody trying to unhook their own Wahoo. Okay, they're very dangerous. They will cut your finger off in a heartbeat don't want to get cut or get injured out here. So let the crew take care of everything. Wahoo coming over, everybody spread out, let the Wahoo come over. There are times when they're freaking out and they jump off the gaff, everybody needs to be spread out so that we can get a hold of them and get them under control. If you want to get a picture of your Wahoo, once they're subdued and we've got them stapled, we're gonna help you get a picture. We'll come down with a camera, with another crew member to help you pick them up or stand them up and we'll get a picture of them. But I want to thank safety all the time. They're a dangerous fish. They're fun and exciting. But please stay away from the pointy end. Um, one of our last trips a year ago, Mike was out there. And a uh, guy gets a wahoo on the deck. And he's got his jig in the corner of the mouth. And Mike hits it with the bat and subdues it, puts the bat away, and turns around. And the guy is going like this with his boot, trying to kick the jig out of his mouth. And he's going, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? One little slip, or the Wahoo decides to jerk his head, and it's slicing his foot open. And the guy's like, oh, don't worry about it. I've done this many times. And he just says, no, not going to do that here. Okay, so just stay away from the pointy end. We can knock the jigs out. We'll take the hooks out of there, and we'll take care of them for you. So really, it's a dangerous fish. So while fishing for Wahoo, I really <laughs> stress safety, because I don't want to see anybody get cut. Another fact about Wahoo is more of you get cut by Wahoo at the dock than any other place. Because you're moving them around, they're dead and they're frozen and you don't think about it, but their teeth are as equally as sharp when they're dead as when they're alive and coming over the rail. So really be careful and stay away from their pointy end. Stay away from their mouth. Let us take care of them. Let us take care of the tags. Let us take care of getting the jigs out of their mouth or the hooks out of their mouth. And then we'll help you get pictures and we'll put them in the well for you. Excellent fish. Wahoo are my favorite. If they're there and they're biting well, might want to consider giving Javier a nice Wahoo. Javier makes a fabulous Wahoo enchiladas. And it's really something to die for. You, you go to bed really full on that dinner. So if somebody wants to donate one, think about that as well, if they're biting and we find them. Any questions, comments about them? Okay, you said on control. Now, the troll people reel in and get out of there, or do they wait the five minutes on the call, or you know what I'm saying? No, when we get bit, you're out of there. Get your jig out of the water and get out of there, unless a crew member comes up to you and says they'll take care of it for you. When one, one of your teammates gets bit, but you, you don't get your jig it out. Again. You don't release it again, right? No, you don't. Okay. When you're bit on a troll, your fish comes in, now we're on to team two. Only one member of your team needs to catch a fish and we switch to the next team. Each team is a team. I think what he meant, what he's talking about is what we've been done in the past with the team members. If you're on, one guy hooks up, the other guy's still free spool and you pick up two or three more fish. Yes, you can free spool your jig and get it back there. That's what I was saying, but the crew members will do that too. If you want to slide your jig back, yeah, yeah, right then on. do that. Please do so. Excellent way to hook more fish. You don't have to immediately wind in. You can freeze pull it back there and then bring it in as the boat's sliding away. That's what I was saying. The crew members like to do it. It's a very effective way to, to catch fish because you're sliding your jig back into more of the water. Questions or comments? Okay, that's really all I got. If you need wire or you need bombs, please see us upstairs. Yes? Can you say something about the wires, about sliding your sardine? Don't what that Sliding, just fishing the slide. No, 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 no. I, th I thought when you were talking about using the bait, putting the sardine on there, you still just put the bait on a normal fashion. Yeah, you want to nose hook them. Okay. You want to nose hook your sardine and to slide them off the side of the boat. Okay. 
If somebody gets bit right on the troll, you don't really want to drop in right on top of them. You want to pitch off to the side, but the boat's still sliding forward. So you want to nose hook your sardine when you're fishing from the Wahoo and the boat's sliding. Once we get stopped and we're drifting, you can hook them however you wish, but at first you want to nose hook them to slide them back. That way they're actually swimming in the water. You hook them, belly hook them, or anus hook them, they're going to be being drugged through the water. That's not proper. You know, they won't look natural. So while we're sliding, nose hook them. Okay, somebody says hook up, boom, they can drop right in. Somebody says hook up, slide, get right in there. I, I love the fish to slide. It's a very effective way. Yeah. What happens with slide fishing is we get more baits back there, we get jigs back there, we get more hooks back there. We're going to hook more of them. The guy with the troll fish, the boat's going to turn one way or another. You just don't want to walk over to the troll fish and drop right in on top of them. What happens now is all of us trying to hook more end up cutting off the troll fish. At that point, we start doing what we call a slide rotation, where team one is trolling, now team two slides back, everybody else has to wait for the boat to come to a stop and wait. How many fish do we miss that way? You know, it's very effective is to slide. I love fishing the slide. Albacore, bluefin, yellowfin, wahoo. Somebody hooks up on the troll, the rest of you pitch your baits out off the side and get them back there. And the boat's coming to a stop. The boat's big, it's heavy, we slide for quite a ways. But you're gonna get your baits back there and you're gonna hook more fish that way. You just don't wanna cut off the troll fish. That guy ha kinda has the right of way. What are the odds of uh, getting uh, Wahoo on the uh, anchor? If they're there, we're gonna catch them on the anchor as well. And if you start getting bit off, then you might want to switch to wire. If uh, we've got tuna and wahoo together, kind of creates a dilemma. You're fishing with wire, and you hook a big tuna, they usually break it. Because you're fighting for a long time and they break it off. But if you're fishing with straight mono, chances of landing your wahoo aren't very good. Now it does happen with a nice circle hook, you can get them, but not that many of them. You know, more of them are gonna cut you off. So if they're there and we get anchored up, there's wahoo around, keep a bomb tied on, keep a rod set up with a wire leader, and keep your tuna fish, your tuna sticks ready to go. But it's Reference 50-50 uh, on J hooks and uh, uh, circle hooks? I like or, both. But I mean, uh, no preference, you can go either way. You can go either way. It's equal type. It's equal type. Yeah, okay. Fish them the same way though. You're fishing oh, yeah, a J hook, yeah, just yeah, put yeah. it in gear. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't really have a preference. I want you to fish with what you're comfortable fishing with. What you have confidence fishing with, what you like to fish with the most is what I want you to fish with. Because you're gonna fish more confidently that way. Don't try to, well, the captain said he really likes circle hooks, so I'm gonna switch to circle hooks. If you're not used to fishing circle hooks, then you're not fishing it as good, you know? So fish with what you're confident fishing with. You'll do better that way. Questions or comments? Okay, that's all, guys. Yes? Do you use any weights when you're uh, using a bait? For Wahoo, I don't use weight too much. Now, for tuna or yellows, you'll hear me on the PA. If I'm metering fish at 100 feet or 120 feet, I'll make the announcement. I'll, I'll keep you very informed all the time. Metering a lot of fish at 100 feet, you might want to try a one ounce or two ounce sinker, sliding sinker or a rubber core to get your baits down. But I'll be talking to you all the time letting you know what I see on the meters. You know, if we're seeing a lot of fish down, I'm going to be letting you know. That way you can get down there too. But uh, using two ounces has been the secret down here. Okay, that's okay. Two ounces was our key, both yellows and some nice tuna. Now, fly line caught the best tuna on the last trip. Straight fly line, no weights. Yellowtail, two ounce sinker getting down was better. Anything else? Okay, that's all, guys. Thanks for having me.